Hello everyone, welcome to our series on Excel VBA. Today, we're going to learn a very practical and useful aspect of VBA programming. Task scheduling. We've all had those repetitive tasks that we wish could just happen automatically, right? Well, that's exactly what we're going to address today. Now what makes this even more interesting is that we'll not just set a task to run automatically, but we'll also give ourselves control to start and stop this automatic task whenever we want with just a simple click. So, I've got this button set up right here on our worksheet, and I will demonstrate to you how clicking this button can switch the automation on or off. This isn't just an exercise in theory, but a practical skill that you can apply immediately to your work, saving you time and making your work in Excel more efficient. Now before we start clicking, let's discuss what's about to happen. Once I press this on-off button and cell D1 switches to on, our scheduled task will start running. This task will keep appending the current date and time in the next available cell in column A every two seconds. Now watch closely as I press the button. See how column A starts filling up, and as soon as I press the button again, switching it to off, the automatic task stops, and no new entries are added in column A. This simple yet powerful feature of Excel VBA can be an immense help in managing repetitive tasks. All right, now that we've seen the functionality in action, it's time to peel back the layers and understand what's happening behind the scenes. How does the on-off button control our scheduled task? How does Excel know when to stop or start the task? All these questions will be answered as we dive into the code. Let's begin with our start-stop automation procedure. This piece of code gets triggered each time we click the on-off button. If the status displayed in cell D1 is off, our code switches it to on and calls the start schedule macro procedure. Conversely, if the status is on, our code switches it to off and calls the stop scheduled macro procedure. Essentially, this is our main control hub that determines whether our automation is running or not, based solely on the on-off status we control with our button. Next, let's take a closer look at the start schedule macro procedure. In this procedure, we set fire time, which is a public variable, to be two seconds from the current time. You might be wondering why we set fire time as public variable. Well, we need fire time to be accessible to all the procedures in our VBA project because it's used not just to schedule my macro, but also to unschedule it in stop scheduled macro. Having fire time as a public variable means that the value we set in one procedure persists and is available to other procedures even after the original procedure has finished executing. Now let's get back to our start schedule macro. After setting the fire time, we instruct Excel to execute my macro when fire time arrives. And what is my macro doing? It's simply grabbing the current date and time and placing it into the next available cell in column A. But importantly, it also calls start schedule macro again to reschedule itself creating a continuous cycle. This scheduling is incredibly versatile. You can adjust the timing to fit your needs. Want to run a task every hour? Simply change the time value in Start Schedule Macro. Need something to happen only once a day? That can be arranged too. Just bear in mind that if the workbook is closed, any scheduled tasks will stop. So plan your scheduling accordingly. Now, as we've learned about starting the task and setting it to run continuously, let's take a look at how to stop it. That's where our stop scheduled macro procedure comes in. This procedure is designed to cancel the scheduled execution of my macro by using the application on time method again, but with an important difference. The schedule parameter is set to false. To do this, Application on time needs to know exactly when the procedure was scheduled to run. Thankfully, we've been careful to store this information in the fire time variable. So when we set schedule to false, we're telling Excel to cancel the task that was scheduled to run at fire time. As you can see, the start stop automation procedure, start schedule macro, my macro, 
and stop scheduled macro all work together to create a robust system for managing automatic tasks in Excel. Whether you need to run tasks every few seconds, every hour or once a day, this system gives you the control to do it. Before we end the tutorial, let's spend a moment further discussing the inner workings of the application on time method. What's happening here is that Excel is quietly keeping track of the time in the background while you work, even as you're performing other tasks or actions within Excel. It's counting down to that fire time that we specified. What's especially neat is that this is happening in parallel with anything else you might be doing in Excel. You can be working on formulas, creating charts, filtering data, the scheduled task will still execute exactly when it's supposed to. Excel's multitasking capabilities ensure that your scheduled tasks run right on time without interrupting your other work. However, it's important to note that if you're actively working in a cell when fire time arrives, Excel will wait until you're finished before executing the scheduled task. This is because Excel wants to avoid conflicts and potential errors that might occur if it tried to carry out two operations at once in the same cell. So you can imagine this as Excel having a built-in silent alarm clock that doesn't disrupt you but always rings right on time. It's this seamless integration of the application, on-time method with your usual workflow that makes it such a powerful tool for automating tasks in Excel. That being said, it's always important to carefully plan and test your scheduled tasks, as incorrect or poorly timed operations could lead to unexpected results or performance issues. As with all aspects of VBA, it's crucial to understand the tools at your disposal and how best to use them in different contexts. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. I hope you found this useful and that you're now ready to put this knowledge into practice. Remember, automating tasks like these can save you countless hours of manual work and boost your productivity significantly. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and share it with anyone else you think might benefit. And if you want to keep learning more about Excel VBA, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.